All right, it's almost here. Corset 2021 releases on Arena this Thursday, June 25th. So, in preparation for the release, I'm going to talk about the top five cards from the set that I'm most excited for. Now, these five cards aren't necessarily my pick for the five most powerful cards from Corset 2021, just the cards I'm personally most excited about, either in terms of playing with them or what they mean for the future of Magic as a whole. So, without further ado, let's jump right in with number five on our list of most exciting cards out of Corset 2021, Brash Taunter. Brash Taunter is a 1-1 goblin that costs 4 and a red and has indestructible. And whenever Brash Taunter is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target opponent. And then Brash Taunter has an activated ability where you can pay 2 and a red, tap it, and Brash Taunter fights another target creature. The idea being that you make him fight big creatures, he takes that damage, has indestructible so he doesn't die, and then he throws all that damage right back at your opponent. So, if you've played the game for a while, you'll recognize Brash Taunter as a new version of the card Stuffy Doll. The major difference between Stuffy Doll and Brash Taunter is that Stuffy Doll could tap to ping itself while Taunter damages itself by picking fights with other creatures. And one important thing to note is that Taunter doesn't have to fight our opponent's creatures. We can have Taunter fight one of our own big boys to deal all that damage to our opponent. But the big reason I'm excited for Taunter is it's not the only stuffy doll type effect we've gotten in the last few years. We've gotten True Fire Captain, we've gotten Spiteful Sliver, Boros Reckoner is another old one, and we've gotten Arc Bond, which is an instant that essentially gives any creature stuffy doll's ability, except on steroids. We're starting to reach a critical mass of these stuffy doll type effects, where we could start actually building a commander deck around exploiting this ability. But, if you haven't seen Stuffy Doll in action before, you may be wondering how we exploit that ability? Well, one way is to stick something like Pariah on our Taunter. Pariah is an aura that says any damage that we dealt to us is instead dealt to the enchanted creature. So, with our Brash Taunter enchanted by Pariah, if our opponent tried to attack us, all the damage would be transferred from us to Taunter, and then Taunter would throw all that damage right back in their face. We can use cards to force them to attack to basically relive the glory days of playing that old childhood game, Stop Hitting Yourself. Or, if our opponent just doesn't have an answer to this combo, we can essentially make it impossible for them to kill us. Another way to exploit Taunter and similar cards is with mass damage cards like Blasphemous Act, which deals 13 damage to each creature and can easily be a one-mana spell in Commander. Or Star of Extinction, which deals a whopping 20 damage to each creature and each Planeswalker. If we have Taunter out when we cast these spells, he'll take that 13 or 20 damage right on the chin, and then turn around and fling it at our opponents, which should oftentimes be enough damage to instantly kill one of our opponents, especially if we have multiple damage redirectors on the battlefield at the same time. Now, the fact that Taunter actually has Indestructible, just like Stuffy Doll, means he can be the functional copies 5 through 8 of Stuffy Doll and fun, janky, modern combo decks looking to throw a meteor at our opponent's faces. But where I'm really excited about this critical mass of Stuffy Doll type effects is Commander. I think with Brash Taunter, we've reached a point where, with some tutors, we can actually build a deck around this damage redirect strategy. Bin Bin Aki Hermit, for example, allows us to regularly deal massive amounts of damage to our own Brash Taunter to burn our opponents out with. Grathama couldn't be the commander of a deck featuring Brash Taunter, but we could easily have both in the 99 of a Gruul deck. And Grathama letting our Brash Taunter fight it for 0 mana every turn means our Taunter is going to be hurling 10 plus damage at our opponents pretty easily every turn. Nin, the Pain Artist, is an extremely powerful commander to combo Brash Taunter and Stuffy Doll with. We can use her activated ability to pour tons of damage on our Taunter, draw that many cards, and then proceed to fling that pain directly at our opponent's life totals. But, if we want to use all the different versions of the Stuffy Doll type effect right now, like Boros Reckoner and True Fire Captain, we're going to need a commander with both red and white in its color identity. So, as far as Boros goes, Feather the Redeem could be a fun option. We could point burn spells at our taunters, have those burn spells bounced back to our hand, and then use the same burn spells over and over and over again on our own creatures to burn our opponents out of the game. Fire Song and Sunspeaker would allow us to essentially double up our self-damaging spells. For example, Lightning Bolting our own Brash Taunter would let us deal 3 damage to our opponent, then we would gain 3 life thanks to Fire Song and Sunspeaker giving our Bolt lifelink. And then, because we gained life, we get to deal 3 more damage to Brash Taunter for a total of 6 damage to our opponent, from 1 Lightning Bolt. And that's not even taking into account the huge board wipe burn spells we were talking about before, like Star of Extinction, which we definitely want to be running already with our Taunters, and would gain us like dozens if not hundreds of life, thanks to Fire Song and Sunspeaker. Or we could use Winota, who is probably objectively the strongest Boros commander. One of our Stuffy Doll type cards, True Fire Captain, is a human, so Winota could be a way for us to swing in with our non-human Taunter and our Stuffy Doll to help dig through our deck, find True Fire Captain as another damage redirector, and then do some big burn spell to double up all that damage and throw it right at our opponent's face. All in all, I think this is an archetype that's just really funny and I've been keeping my eye on for a long time, and it slowly keeps getting more and more love from Watsi. And Taunter having Indestructible and just straight up being another stuffy doll makes me think the pieces might finally be there for a sweet, silly combo deck. Moving on to number four on our list, the most exciting core set 2021 cards, we have Pack Leader. Pack Leader is a 2-2 dog for one and a white. 
Pack Leader's abilities are other dogs you control get plus one plus one, and whenever Pack Leader attacks, prevent all combat damage that will be dealt this turn to dogs you control. Corset 2021 is finally introducing dogs to magic as a creature type, and Pack Leader is our very first dog lord. Now you can already build a fun commander deck around dogs for cheap thanks to a legend out of this set, and I have a video on that legend already, so if you want to check out dogs and commander, I'll put a card for it here in the video, and I'll link to it in the description. But I'm most excited about what Pack Leader means for the future. You see, Pack Leader is a two mana lord, and two mana lords are the bread and butter of real, supported tribes and magic. I think starting out with a card as powerful as Pack Leader means Watsi has big plans for dogs as a creature type, and that dog tribal could become the real deal. We can see a close parallel with how Watsi has handled the cat creature type in the last few years. Cats, as of just a few years ago, had no substantial support as a tribe. But then came Amonkhet, and with it, Regal Caracal. An expensive lord, but a powerful one. And then Pride Sovereign, an Hour of Devastation. And as recently as Ikoria, we got Kahira. Not only a cat lord, but a cat lord as a companion, one of the most busted mechanics in history. Cats! which weren't a real tribe just a few years ago, have grown to become one of the better tribes in Magic. Cat Tribal even got a whole commander precon led by Arabo, and introducing all sorts of new powerful cat tech cards. And then cats even got their own secret layer release with cute cat art replacements for a ton of the cat stables. All of this to say, once Watsi decided to start supporting cats, they went hard. And I'm pretty sure we can expect the same for dogs going forward. Similar to what happened with cats, I expect to see more and more dog tribal support trickling out over the next few years. And I'm sure Watsi knows a dog Dog tribal commander precon would sell like hotcakes. And hell, if you make them cute enough, I'll shell out some cash for secret layer puppies. And really, we've already started to see this in action. In the set immediately after Core 2021, Jumpstart, we've already got some new dog support. Like Release the Dogs, who can spit out four dog tokens for four mana, and Supply Runners, which is a dog that puts plus one plus one counters on all of our other creatures when it enters the battlefield. So Pack Leader is super exciting, not for its immediate applications, but for what it's a precursor to. For what it tells us about dogs as a tribe in the near future and the future looks good. So moving on to number three in our list of most exciting cards from Core Set 2021, we've got Idol of Endurance. Idol of Endurance is an artifact that costs two and a white. When Idol of Endurance enters the battlefield, you exile all creature cards with a converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard until Idol of Endurance leaves the battlefield. That until it leaves the battlefield clause is pretty important because that means if Idol of Endurance gets destroyed or whatever, all your creatures just come back to the graveyard. They're not just stuck in exile forever. And then Idol of Endurance has an activated ability. By paying one and a white and then tapping it, until the end of the turn, we may cast a creature spell from among the cards exiled with Idol of Endurance without paying its mana cost. So just on its barest level, Idol of Endurance is a pretty powerful card, letting creature-based decks recover a lot of resources from its graveyard after a board wipe or a battle of attrition, even in a mono-white deck, which usually has no great way to regain card advantage. But that's why I'm really excited about Idol of Endurance what it means for white and magic. You see, Idol of Endurance is part of Watsi's new experiment to give card advantage to white, something they've intentionally avoided for a long time. Another example of this experiment in Core Set 2021 is Mangara, and I've done a whole separate video about Mangara and his design that I'll also link to here in the video and in the description. See, white has been given some bits of card advantage in the past, but they've been one-offs or they've been even looked back on as mistakes by Watsi, but no more. Idol of Endurance and also Mangara, I think, are perfect ways to give white card advantage. They give white card advantage, but in a way that's still very much place into White's restrictions of favoring small creatures and taxing the opponent. Giving White the tools to grind out card advantage opens up all new avenues for the color, from making its reliance on blue and control decks less necessary, to potentially giving White Weenie decks the tools to power through removal via card advantage, kind of like light up the stage and similar cards I've given red decks in the last few years. But outside of my excitement for what Idol of Endurance means for White getting card advantage in general, there are some interesting things you can do with Idol specifically in Standard right now. Corridor Monitor is something that we can cast with Idol of Endurance, and when it enters the battlefield, it actually untaps Idol, allowing us to tap Idol again and immediately cast another exiled creature. And Emery and Idol essentially both find each other, because Idol is able to cast Emery out of the graveyard, and Emery is able to cast Idol out of the graveyard. So I think there's the potential of some kind of white-blue self-mill artifact deck built around grinding out a ton of value with these synergies. But combos aside, I'm just really excited to have confirmation that White is finally going to get its own form of card advantage. And starting off with such home run designs between Idol and Mangara gives me a lot of hope for Watsi's newest experiment. And then moving on to number two on our list of the most exciting cards from Core Set 2021, we've got Eliminate. Eliminate is pretty simple. It's an instant that costs one and a black, and it says destroy target creature or planeswalker with converted mana cost three or less. And alongside Eliminate, we've also got Pestilent Haze, which is a sorcery that costs one, a black, and a black, and says choose one. All creatures get minus two, minus two until the end of the turn, 
or remove two loyalty counters from each Planeswalker. And we also got Angelic Ascension, which is an instant that costs one and a white and says, Exile target creature or Planeswalker, its controller creates a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying. You see, Magic has become a game about Planeswalkers. Planeswalkers just keep getting stronger and stronger, more and more efficient, but answers to Planeswalkers have remained pretty paltry in comparison. But I think Eliminate, Pestilent Haze, and Angelic Ascension showcase a new attitude towards Planeswalkers. If Planeswalkers are going to be as easy to play and benefit from as creatures, they should be as easy to answer as creatures. And to me, these cards seem to indicate that Watsi has finally gotten that memo. You see, not only are these flexible, efficient answer to Planeswalkers, they're all uncommon. So no longer do you have to spend your rare wild cards to just have the basic functionality of answering your opponent's threats. These cards give me hope that we're moving towards a new era of Planeswalkers being as vulnerable and answerable as creatures. Now, outside of these uncommons, we've also gotten some fantastic rare Planeswalker answers out of Corset 2021. Spark Hunter Masticore is an absolute monster against any Planeswalker-based decks, and even Baron could have just bounced creatures like most other Man of War effects, but specifically is also able to bounce Planeswalkers. And similar to Baron, Hooded Blightfang could have easily done its job as a Death Toucher Lord without its last ability, but it was also specifically made a very solid answer to Planeswalkers at 3 mana. What it really comes down to is this. I think Control has just had it a little too easy. It's too easy to just sit back playing Planeswalkers and playing board wipes that those Planeswalkers are immune to. In my opinion, Wraths like Shadow the Sky should be destroying creatures and Planeswalkers to make it a lot more difficult to break the symmetry, and to make Control a little more complicated to play than just play and defend the Planeswalkers. As kind of backwards as it seems, I think Wraths that only destroy creatures should actually cost more. And Eliminate and other cards like it in Corset 2021 seem to indicate to me that things are headed this way. And hopefully these cards are just the beginning. Give me a fatal push for Planeswalkers, you cowards. And finally, moving on to number one on our list of the most exciting cards out of Corset 2021, we have Conspicuous Snoop. Conspicuous Snoop is a 2-mana Goblin Rogue that costs a red and a red. Snoop says, play with the top card of your library revealed. You may cast Goblin spells from the top of your library. And, as long as the top card of your library is a Goblin card, Conspicuous Snoop has all the activated abilities of that card on top of your deck. So Conspicuous Snoop is basically an experimental frenzy for Goblins, except it costs 2 less mana. And Experimental Frenzy was extremely good, like key card in some of the best decks in Standard good. And speaking of Standard, let's not forget we still have Goblin Ringleader, one of the best Goblin cards in decks going all the way back to Legacy, and I imagine Snoop will see play in those older formats as well. Between Ringleader and Snoop, if our Standard deck is mostly Goblins, we can have an absolutely ridiculous amount of card advantage for a Tribal Aggro deck. And we do have some good Goblins currently in Standard, with Zerta Goblin acting as a 2-mana 3-3, and Ember Hauler giving us a Shock staple to a Tribally relevant body. And outside of Standard, I think Snoop has a lot of potential to power up pioneer and modern goblin decks like 8-Whack. Using Snoop should allow us to more consistently find our Bushwhacker, or even just to spit out some goblins from the top of our deck that we can then power up with the Bushwhackers in our hand. And if you read Snoop carefully, it says goblin cards, not just goblin creatures. Tarfire is a tribal instant that also counts as a goblin spell. Tarfire has seen modern play before, primarily because tribal also counts as another card type for cards like Tarmogoyf, but we can use it with Snoop to give us access to some actual burn without running non-goblin cards. But really, everything I just mentioned is pretty much just gravy, because the real reason I'm excited for Snoop is that it's part of a two-card infinite combo that can pretty consistently kill your opponent as early as turn three. So let's walk through how the combo works. Imagine the card back on the right there represents your deck. On turn one, we do nothing, doesn't matter. On turn two, we play Snoop, and then on turn three, we play Boggart Harbinger, and these two cards are all it takes for us to win the game this turn. Harbinger is a 2-1 goblin that says when it enters the battlefield, we get to look through our deck, find a goblin, and put that goblin on top of our deck. So, using Boggart's ability, we search through our deck for Kikijiki, Mirror Breaker. Kikijiki has an activated ability that says it can tap itself to make a copy of a non-legendary creature, and that copy has haste. And since Kikijiki is now on top of our library, that means Snoop gets its activated ability. So, now we tap our Snoop to use Kikijiki's activated ability. And the trick here is that because Snoop isn't legendary, we can use Kikijiki's ability on Snoop. So we tap our Snoop to make a copy of itself with haste. Then we tap that copy to make another copy. Then we tap that copy to make another copy, and so on and so on. And we can just keep repeating that, making infinite copies of Snoop, all of them tapped except for the last copy of Snoop, which is untapped. So after we make a million Snoops, we tap our last untapped Snoop, but instead of making another Snoop copy, we target Boggart with the ability this time. So we make a copy of Boggart, and when that copy enters the battlefield, we get Boggart's enter the battlefield ability again. 
so we get to once again look to our deck for a goblin and put it on top of our deck. This time, the goblin we put on top of our deck is Mog Fanatic. Mog Fanatic has the activated ability to sacrifice itself to deal one damage to any target. And since Mog Fanatic is now on top of our deck, that means all one million of our snoops also have that activated ability. So we sacrifice all one million of our snoops, point a million of damage at our opponent's faces, and we win the game on turn three. Let's reiterate that. This was infinite damage on turn three with only two cards required for this combo, and it's a combo that could fit in a regular goblin shell that would want to be running a lot of these creatures anyway. So, Snoop being a powerful new addition to one of my personal favorite tribes across so many formats, and being the key piece in a new infinite turn three combo kill across formats modern and older, puts Conspicuous Snoop at number one on my list, the most exciting cards out of Corset 2021. And that's going to wrap it up for the list. Corset 2021 is a wild set, probably the best number corset ever, in my opinion. And I can't wait to try out all these new cards in all sorts of formats. But how about you? What do you think? Are you excited to redirect mass amounts of damage with Taunter? What about the beginning of Dog's Tribal? Are you hyped for white card advantage and good uncommon planeswalker removal? Are you prepared to loop some snoops? Or is there something else from Corset 2021 that you're even more excited about? Let me know. Anyway, this has been 2D, and I'll see you next time.